Hello and welcome to the Ask Assad Show. I'm Michael Gaines and glad you are joining us as we continue to bring you conversations and bring insight out as we provide uh, insight into the market, uh, those forces and people uh, that are really helping shape the energy industry. So we are looking forward to having a great conversation today and glad you are joining us. So uh, before we jump into our main conversation and, and really uh, dive in, we're gonna go ahead and bring in NOV's uh, Shelby Dumain to uh, talk about how you can also be a part of today's conversation. Hey, Shelby. Hey, Michael. Uh, so yeah, so today we have a really great show coming up for everybody watching. And if you would like to uh, comment and ask a question for our guest or for Assad at any point throughout the show, you can do so simply by just commenting below. Uh, whether you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, we're in the comment section throughout the entire uh, episode. So any of your comments, we'll be able to see those. And at the end, we will be doing a Q&A live on the show uh, with Michael Assad and our guest, uh, Ed, who we'll be bringing on in just a little bit. Uh, and then after the show, if you would like to get in touch with us, there's a few different ways you can do that. Uh, the first way is you can actually email us at askassad at nov.com. That's on the screen now. And the other way, and, and I say this all the time, it's my favorite way, is you can give us a call and, and leave a voicemail. Uh, I love this. You can stay anonymous or let us know your name and maybe where you work. Uh, and, and that number is country code plus one three four six two two three four seven nine nine. And that's on the screen uh, now if you need that number. Um, so yeah, at, at any point, let us know uh, if you have comments or questions. And, and I look forward to seeing you at the end of the episode for the live Q&A. All right. Thanks, Shelby. Well, uh, yeah. So as we mentioned, we are actually going to go ahead and bring in uh, actually our, our show's, uh, my co-host, but really the show's namesake. So uh, Asad Mahana, Director of Business Strategy uh, for NOV. So uh, hey, Asad, I'm, uh, I, I think I'm running the, sh the, the cameras today, and I, 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 or I thought I was, but I'm not, and I'm causing all kinds of mess, but <laughs> this is what happens when you put, put me in charge uh, of, of these kind of things. That, that's okay. As, as long as you have my voice, you don't need to show my face. Yeah, I'm well, we'll put, maybe put you behind a curtain or something. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You put me behind a curtain. That's what we really need to do. Hey, hey Michael, I think we're celebrating a, a special week this week, or a special day, really. Isn't it your birthday today? Well, it's coming. To, so it's tomorrow. Yeah. So I, I get to, uh, yeah, my life is, is always rounding out the, um, uh, the third quarter. So, uh, it's had its ups and downs, but that's, that's okay. I, I don't, uh, I, I usually, I, I look for the, the good ones, but yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's fun, fun times. So okay. looking forward to it. I, I bet you didn't expect to wake up at three in the morning, uh, on your, on your birthday or birth week. Well, you know, it's, uh, you know, it was getting a little, little rocky this morning. Uh, but, uh, you know, now, now that I, I'm here with you, Assad and, and Shelby and, and our, our guest, uh, that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, it's definitely, definitely worth it. So, uh, so glad, yeah. definitely I, glad to be here. I tell you the, the good thing about being so early is, is, uh, Houston's still asleep. So, uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, we can talk, uh, all we want about them. They won't know. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I mean, to your, your point, uh, Assad, so, you know, for those that that's all the title of today's conversation, you know, said that we're, we're having a, a Middle East focus, um, a really a re regional, uh, series, but yeah, we're focused on, on, uh, on, on the Middle East right now, but maybe we should back up. So we're talking, having a regional series. Yeah. To your point, we actually started uh, pretty, pretty early this morning, Houston time. Um, so why, why are we, why are we doing this, this regional focus? What's, what's the thought there? Yeah, well, uh, regional focus really is um, an attempt to uh, give a spotlight to uh, other regions around the world where uh, some some pretty big challenges are being um, overcome, uh, resolved. Some pretty pretty complex uh, drilling, completion, production um, uh, challenges that some great great companies, uh, whether uh, national companies or international companies. Um, are overcoming around the world. The, the shale world has taken the spotlight, I think, for the last decade. But as we've seen, uh, shale's a little bit uh, in a bind these days. Um, and it's only fair to um, uh, 
give uh, a regional focus to uh, to other regions. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, yeah, to to your point, and and uh, maybe it'll help give folks some additional context. Uh, yeah, to you know, as I said a moment ago, we're we're kind of starting off this this regional series focused on uh, the the Middle East uh, as our our first region. So uh, to to kind of your your point that you just mentioned, can you kind of talk a little bit about why why start there? I mean, we could we could start anywhere, and not saying that. Anything's better or worse, but but there's a kind of a, a logic to the the madness in a, in, a, in a sense. So so why why are we starting there? Well, not not to sound biased, but I'm from there, and, and it was kind of oh, okay. it, it sounded <laughs> like a good place to start. There it is. <laughs> no, I mean, look, uh, I, I I think we talked about this before on the show. I started my career in the Middle East. I spent eight years between Dubai and the Mom, and that's that's really where I uh, sunk my teeth into operations uh, and and. Got to build some fantastic, fantastic relationships with uh, both our NOV employees in the region as well as uh, our NOV customers. Um, so uh, that, that's that's I mean that's why I have a little bit of inclination towards the Middle East. Um, I I also realized there that I like to I like to eat fish more than do the fishing itself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we'd go we'd go out on these uh, deep sea fishing trips, uh, and it takes about maybe an hour two hours in, in in the in the ocean just and i'd get the worst seasickness ever and that's that's really where i decided to, to stick to eating fish instead of doing the sport um uh, but really with with all seriousness i think the uh the the middle east today has has positions itself economically as being the heart of uh the hydrocarbon supply for the world and um uh, even this, despite of what's going on the last six uh, or eight months, um, if if we really look at shale again, it's taken the spotlight over the last decade. Um, uh, but really, in retrospect, shale has reached thirteen uh, plus million barrels a day of production. The Middle East has uh, consistently sustained north of twenty-five to thirty million barrels a day. So, in terms of share of the pie, the Middle East has been the sustainable. Uh, consistent uh, source of supply, um, and the, the strategic part for NOV there is that we're extremely highly committed and invested to the region, um, and we believe uh, our folks there deserve uh, uh, the spotlight too. Mm. So, uh, and I think maybe that's a, a good segue, Assad, uh, to to bring in today's guest. So, want to go ahead and introduce. Uh, Ed Whitnell. So Ed is joining us uh, live from Dubai. So Ed, uh, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Michael. It's, uh, it's nice to be here and uh, I look forward to talking about the place where I work. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, maybe uh, just for those that uh, aren't familiar, could you give maybe a little bit of um, of context into to what you're doing uh, there in Dubai right now and, and what you're doing uh, at NOV. Okay. So uh, here in Dubai, I'm the, the Vice President of Operations and the Managing Director for the Rig Technologies Group. Um, what that means is I look after our, uh, largely our, our rig up group here, and then uh, add support where I can for our aftermarket group. And I've been here about three years. I've been with NOV 17 years, all of those years with uh, with RIG. Originally started in uh, the aftermarket group and then made the transition over to our operations group about seven years ago. Okay, great. It's pretty awesome. And and you live in, in Dubai, is that right, Ed? Yeah, live in Dubai. I got my family here, four kids, my wife and our dog. It's pretty awesome. That's cool. Um, I want to I want to maybe uh, uh, get into the side of the um, uh, scope uh, that NOV covers. Uh, but before we get there, maybe, Ed, uh, for those who don't know, how how did uh, NOV get to where it is today? How has it historically evolved to uh, become uh, a, a significant player in, in, a, in, a, in its footprint in the Middle East? So maybe some color on that. Sure. I'm a, uh, a history nerd through and through. Okay. Uh, my kids would probably argue that I'm, a, I'm just a nerd through and through. But, uh, 
and 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 loving uh, the the job that I've been doing for the last 17 years. Uh, I was able to dig into some of our history. So NOV has been in the region for right at 50 years. Our first entity in the region was in Damam, uh, one of your former haunts. Yeah. Uh, in 1972, we opened up a, uh, a entity called Vetco Tubular Services, which we still operate under today. We we within NOV would know it more commonly as, as Tubiscope. Yeah. And and they began in 1972 with uh, industrial NDT, um, OCTG, and and drill pipe inspections and machining and, and thread repair. Wow. Mm. Mm. So 50 yeah. years, 50 years in the region. And in those 50 years, we've, we've added significantly to capabilities, but, uh, but that was where we started. Wow. I, I personally didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so cool. maybe, maybe to your, your, your comment there, Ed, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I mean, we've, you know, when you look at the the landscape, uh, you know, oil and gas and um, innovation certainly have seen you know massive uh, strides and increases both in technological uh, advancement, efficiencies, you know, the the whole nine. So, um, you know, maybe kind of diving in from a an NOV lens, an NOV lens standpoint uh, mm -hmm. in the the region. How how is how is that growth? Uh, what does that look like? And, and, and really kind of maybe fast forwarding to today, what are some of those uh, 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 capabilities that have advanced through, uh, through, through the years to where we are now? Sure. Uh, you know, NOV in the Middle East is a, is a really good cross section of all of NOV. Um, you know, we've, we've made uh, drill pipe in the UAE. Um, we've got uh, coatings plants, uh, three of them actually. Uh, in in two different countries, we've got reline facilities. Um, we have aftermarket uh, service repair spare parts in almost uh, every uh, country in the Middle East and North Africa. We have a, in fact, the only rig up yard for building land rigs in uh, the UAE. Um, we got fiberglass products. Uh, we got two plants there, one in, one in Saudi, one in Oman. Um, and then uh, we've got downhole facilities, um, bits, motors, complete power ends. Uh, again, kind of spread out, but, but largely those two are focused on, uh, on Saudi and the UAE, mm -hmm. but then support Egypt, Algeria, um, Oman, Kuwait, Qatar. Which, which it sounds like, I mean, as you kind of rattle those things off, I mean, none of, none of that is is by accident. I mean, really making sure that, uh, you know, from a, a support standpoint that that we're able to provide the needed support as, as close as possible, right? I mean, I've, I've heard our, 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 our organization and leadership and other folks, you know, say that, you know, we, we'd like to be where our customers are. And if that means that, that we need to, to have folks like yourself you know, locally, then, then that's what we try to try to do. Absolutely. I mean, um, we've we have over the last 50 years um, increased our investment in the in the region. And then in the last 10 years, significantly increased our our investment in the region, um, largely because, as, as Assad mentioned, you know, the, the Middle East is the, the beating heart of petroleum supply. Um, you know, there, there are certainly other important uh, contributors, uh, Russia, South America, uh, the U.S. At, at 13 million at, at the, the last peak. Um, but but certainly the the lowest lifting cost uh, and, and probably the biggest share of, of services opportunity for us mm -hmm. right now is, is going to be found right here. So it's, it's certainly a great place to, to find yourself uh, today. So, so what, what I hear from you, uh, uh, Ed, is we really covered the whole value chain in the upstream world uh, to almost fully satisfy uh, drilling, completing, and producing a well in the Middle East. We do, Assad. It's uh, it's really a, a unique position that we've got here, and that that we support all of those. Not just tangentially, but but directly, um, literally from from spud to production. 
Yeah. Um, as you're aware, we've we've got in our caps group um, uh, a, a number of business units that that really support the production, whether that's um, some of the things we've seen, like like fracking shales in the Middle East, which has become surprisingly important here. Um, all the way down to, to some of our newer technologies like uh, like CBOX that we're that we're working to deploy here as well. So we really do touch from that first bit making its first turn uh, all the way to uh, you know a subsea or a, uh, a wellhead safety valve and and the ability to produce crude. That's awesome. And and with that, uh, I, I'm guessing. Uh, it comes naturally that we support local content in each one of these regions, which again is is a, is a, is a big deal. Obviously, it is. I mean, um, local content grows in importance around the world. It seems year on year. Um, yeah. We've we've seen it um, sort of start in in Europe originally, and or, I mean, you, you could argue seeing it start in in America back in the seventies, yeah, sure. but. Um, in the oil field, it, it certainly began to, to gain prominence kind of through Northern Europe and then uh, Asia and South America and now the Middle East and, and back to Asia again. So, uh, you know, there, there are loads of, of programs here um, in the UAE. We have the, the in-country value or ICV program and mm -hmm. in Saudi, it's called ICTIVA. In, um, in Qatar, I believe it's uh, Tatwin. Um, yeah. So there, there, there are programs that we participate in and 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 really try and drive uh, local content. One, because that that's what our customers, the, the NOCs, um, are looking for. It's what our host countries uh, are looking for. We try to to certainly cater to that and recognize that there's uh, there's importance to our uh, our host countries in that. So mm -hmm. we. We really uh, try to to play well there, and and our investments have, have shown that we have we have very solid scores uh, in in each of those. Certainly in, in ICV and in ICTIVA, both um, yeah. solid scores, and and, and plans to uh, to increase those over time. So one of the things, uh, Ed, for those that uh, you know follow the industry and 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 major happenings, uh, uh, actually occurred not too long ago uh, with uh, the announcement of of Arm or the uh, Arabian Rig Manufacturing a, a joint venture. So, um, so some might be be intimately familiar. I always like to assume folks may not know. So uh, for those that, that aren't familiar, could you talk a little bit about that and why why that's, uh, why that's an important uh, conversation point for us? Sure. So to, to give a little bit of context and history, um, Saudi has a, a vision 2030 and a, and a big part of that vision was growing their local supply chain as a way of diversifying their economy away from just pure petrodollars. So when they put the in kingdom total value add, what we call ICTIVA local content program in, uh, one of the ways that they wanted to, to drive that growth was putting their money where their mouth is and, and creating joint ventures. So they, they, they created a number of joint ventures. Um, one of those is a joint venture uh, to, to be a land drilling contractor. One's a joint venture to be an offshore drilling contractor. One's a joint venture to, to build jackups and service vessels in kingdom and the the joint venture that uh, that we went into with them uh, arm as you call it is uh, to provide land drilling rigs and drilling equipment built in kingdom and so we signed a contract uh, a few years ago and and are well underway with our facility construction right now um, and we're going to be building no less than than 50 rigs over the span of 10 years and and each year we will be kind of adding to our local content muscle by bringing more and more of that drilling equipment manufacturing in kingdom as well so there's going to be a a transfer of know-how that's going to really help us to to be successful and achieve the goals that that we've agreed with aramco no that's great that's and, awesome. and, and i understand there's a there's a already a, another jv that'll be using those rigs too. 
Yeah, that's actually the the purchaser of those rigs is the JV that that Aramco formed for drilling uh, onshore. It's called Sunod. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, and and I know Asad, you're you're about to jump in. Before you do, I just want to uh, make mention for those that are joining us uh, live. If you have any uh, questions or uh, anything that you'd like uh, Asad or Ed to to talk about with respect to NLV in the Middle East, uh, feel free to put your question uh, in the chat box, whether you're watching us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube, and uh, and we'll look to get to that in our Q&A portion coming up in just uh, a quick moment. So, uh, so sorry, so I didn't mean to jump in front of you there, but- uh, just yeah, I was gonna make a comment on, yeah. I mean, building 50 rigs uh, in Saudi Arabia over the next 10 years, that that's not just manufacturing capabilities, Ed, that's bringing in, uh, local skills, local expertise, developing local technology, uh, improving the whole supply chain, really building an economy around uh, this this facility is going to support a tremendous growth that's planned uh, for the kingdom. It is. Um, you know, the, the facility is uh, is along the, the eastern seaboard of, of Saudi Arabia in a place called Ras al Khair. Mm -hmm. And it, it will be the, the third industrial city so you, you've got Damam, uh, which you're familiar with, and I'm sure you know Jubail. So it's, it's north of Jubail. So there are some, some challenges in the logistics of getting our people there. But, but we're confident that the, the growth will come to support that. Sure. But in the meantime, we're, we are hiring talent, which is uh, NOV talent that we're moving uh, across to the JV, right. as well as hiring uh, locals and, yeah. and other nationals that'll help us really flesh it out because it, it's a, it's a huge challenge to build 50 rigs. It's yeah. a an even bigger challenge to, to build them in a new place. Sure. And it, and it's an even bigger challenge to do that while growing our know-how and in, in building drilling equipment. Uh, but all of that is, is kind of backstopped against um, NOV's core competence in, in land rigs and drilling equipment in manufacturing know-how. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got a, a strong team in place that's going to drive that to success. And and as a, a guy who spent the last few years in manufacturing and, and anybody that, that's listening and is in manufacturing knows, you know, when, when you can plan out a manufacturing business for the next 10 years, uh, it, it's huge for what you can do for yeah. efficiency and economies of scale and how you manage your supply chain. Yeah. So it, it really is um, beneficial to us and, and, and helps uh, Aramco and the kingdom achieve their goals. Yeah. So it really is one of those unicorn sort of win-win situations that, right. that we all achieve. Yeah, well, it, it's massive. I mean, really kudos goes to uh, all those behind the, the JV and, and to you at uh, Cater for, for that JV to, and, and your team to kind of push that. And, and I didn't want to stop you earlier, but the way you pronounced the Ras al Khair, um, I got to say, I'm proud of you. That's, uh, that's really dedication to the Arabic language right there. <laughs> you know, I, I, I do believe when you live in a country, you really should try to learn the language. And I've, I've done that in uh, some of the other countries I've lived in and, awesome. and, and even gotten fluent. Um, I, will, I will admit that, that Arabic uh, didn't work out for me. I, I tried very hard, earnestly for a, for a solid year. But yeah. um, in Dubai, it's, it's, uh, everyone speaks English. So and, and everyone, generally speaking, tries to be very polite. So as soon yeah. as I would would stumble with a word, there would there would be someone who would immediately switch to English in, in an attempt to help. And, and and so it was it was quite hard to, to really try and master it. So I, I can do the the normal the greetings, the how are you, the what's going on, the k -fak That's pretty <laughs> type cool. of stuff. Um, you know. Ed, I, I wanted to um, maybe before handing to, to Michael with Q&A. Um, I wanted to, to ask you what's next. What what what's uh, NOV uh, heading towards in the region? What are what are both rig technologies specifically and maybe as a whole? Uh, I, and I'm assuming there's going to be a bit of more commitment in your answer. Yeah, I mean for sure. Um, I think honestly, the things that are next for us here are probably the same things, or at least very similar things that are that are next for everywhere okay just because it, it's 
it's where we are, I think, as an industry right now. Sure. We, we hear a lot of talk about an energy transition and uh, and despite the Middle East being the beating heart of of oil and gas production, um, yeah. there are there are massive solar projects, alternative energy projects that are going on. And I think the runway for that is a lot longer than than people think, yeah. uh, which means that there's a <laughs> there's there's still a very big place for, for oil and gas, I think, for, for the foreseeable future. Uh, but that that does represent a, a big opportunity for us, and as you know, we're we're deploying a lot of our assets, uh, looking at that, and 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 that's that is really exciting for us right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the next one, um, which again is is certainly not overhyped, but I think people are tired of talking about the potential, and and they really want to see the results, and and that's with uh, digitization and automation. And we're making some some real progress in this region uh, with that. We've got uh, our Novo system has been deployed. Uh, some of the apps for that, uh, uh, particularly out of our, our MD Taco group and then obviously out of our, our rig technologies group working together um, are are showing some some benefits. There things that we that we've seen uh, in Alaska, things we've seen in the lower 48 yeah. uh, really beginning to take hold here. Yeah. Um, which is is really exciting, um, and then I think the last one is, is is gas, and I think gas is probably the one bright spot in in the industry right now. Um, you know, the sentiment around gas, even in the U.S., is is you know, stronger than it was even last quarter, mm-hmm. and here gas has taken on a, a strategic uh, nature. So um, you know, we're we're actually seeing spread counts growing here. Uh, because a lot of the gas that uh, that we can get here is is found in, in shale formations. So a lot of the know-how that drillers in the lower 48 have accumulated is now coming across and we're seeing some EMP companies out of the US that are showing up here uh, that are that are partnering with with NOCs. and and there is a big push uh, across every country in the Middle East and North Africa to, to figure out how they can um, produce their own gas as well as export gas. Hmm. Hmm. So I, th- I think that's where I think that's where the the future is for for us and for the region right now. Now that sounds. I mean, that, and that's really exciting. I mean, when you really look at it, to to your point, right? For someone that uh, is, I mean, I I try to be a, a historical nerd, but it, it looks like you've you've <laughs> taken the cake today. But I mean, but when you really look at the the history, and again, just. The overall uh, trajectory and, and uh, uh, you know things that have, have been able to to transpire to, to your point, I think that really is exciting, and I, I'm certainly um, joining you in seeing in, in really looking forward to to seeing how the continued evolution and growth, uh, both in the region and certainly globally from a collaborative standpoint, how that all that continues to uh, to grow. So so I think that's that's really good, Ed, and and to. Um, to some of the comments earlier, I, I've been actually looking at, I mean, I'm certainly listening to you, but I'm looking over at some of the comments that are, are coming in. And, and to that point, I think I want to go ahead and see if we can bring in Shelby Dumain to get some of mm-hmm. the Q&A uh, going, because I, I think I've seen some some good comments uh, mm-hmm. coming in, Shelby. So what uh, what what are some of those those conversations that, that are happening in the mm-hmm. chat? Absolutely, Michael. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of really great comments. So thank you to everyone for watching. And if you still have some, you still have time, go ahead and type those in and we'll get to as many uh, as we can. So this first one comes from David Stokes on LinkedIn. And he was wondering, in regards to OGT or OCTG, uh, what progress is NOV making when it comes to RFID uh, tracking or inspection automation? Mm. I am about to be out of my depth, but, <laughs> but fair, fair. question as a guy who's not in that part of our business, um, I, I, I believe we actually, we pioneered a lot of the RFID uh, technology, particularly in relation to tubulars. And, and I think we've subsequently taken it and, and shown how we can use it with drilling equipment. But um, I believe that, that, um, uh, Today, all of our say, say drill pipe tubulars um, have the option to have RFID plag, RFID tags implanted in them. Right. And they can be added during uh, 
you know, inspection, repair, hard banding, that sort of thing. Right. I think that's the uh, aside. I think that's the track ID yeah. technology, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's a product, it's technology that NOV's uh, uh, been working on. I think uh, if, um, if it's one thing with drill pipe, uh, just a traceability, um, the ability to, to, to manage that asset over its lifetime um, has, has shown tremendous advantage. I think we're, we're making some, some great progress there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so this next question comes from Athar on LinkedIn. And he actually asked this of either uh, Ed or Assad. He's wondering how the growth of the petroleum sector uh, will be affected by the shifted focus to natural gas. Which is actually just a point that you you touched on, Ed. So uh, so there's there there it is, right right for you. Okay. Um, the the shift to natural gas is is yeah. <laughs> we we are in a cyclical industry, and and just in my career, you know, I, I can remember watching uh, the liquids rigs mm. Uh, mm. go to ninety percent of the rig count, while the gas rigs fell to to ten percent or less. And um, and and here we are, I think, seeing the the inverse of that with the number of gas rigs coming on. Uh, the, the good news is, is that because of COVID, we'd seen an, a number of rigs that had been idled uh, in this region, as we saw, obviously, all over the world. Um, but in the last four to six weeks, uh, some of those assets have gone uh, gone operational again, which is is great for for the industry and, and certainly good for us. And, and a lot of that focus uh, for those assets is now towards gas. And, and we are excited about supporting them and helping uh, them to really exploit any of those reservoirs that they've got. Yeah, and, there, and there's quite a bit of activity going on. I mean, if you see what's going on in East Med uh, with uh, international organizations forming around gas supply from that part of the world, um, supply seems to not be an issue. So um, I think I think we'll see some, I mean, to, to Ed's point, we'll, we'll see some some more stable uh, source of energy also coming from there. Although um, I think we, we mentioned that in the past, Hi hydrocarbons as a whole, but more particularly maybe oil um, will, will probably remain as a, as a source, um, if not for power generation, but for the industrial mm -hmm. sector, for the shipping sector. Uh, or transportation. So, um, as as we progress and uh, we 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 see these shifts or energy transitions, whether uh, in the past uh, from from coal to to hydrocarbons or oil, and now slightly from oil to gas, um, it's always going to be a mix. It's it's almost never going to be one or the other. Uh, these mm -hmm. these transitions take dec take decades. Um, and it'll, it'll be uh, a gradual transition. Mm -hmm. It will be. <laughs> and I'd recommend if, if anyone's curious about <laughs> energy transition, that is something that uh, we talk about on uh, here on the Ask Assad show. So definitely uh, keep tuned in to, to future episodes is, is what I'd say, <laughs> say about that. Good, good uh, point, you know, the, the social media manager in me has to mention that. <laughs> 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 so this next question comes from uh, Matt on LinkedIn, and he's wondering, uh, Ed, could you talk a little bit more, uh, maybe give a little more insight on those 50 rigs being built? Uh, he's wondering about design or maybe some other elements that you could maybe talk about. Uh, you know, for, for confidentiality reasons, we don't want right. to go too deep into it, but um, the the design is is one that's uh, that's well known. It's, it's mm -hmm. our... Uh, it's our large, fast-moving desert rig, which has been, um, or at least attempted to be copied many times, but uh, but but we retain that one, and uh, and we've actually sold a number of them uh, out of, actually out of our, our Dubai yard uh, in the last two years. So it's a it's a very capable 2,000 horsepower fast-moving desert rig, um, one that that we're really proud of because it it came here uh, originally designed out of one of our uh, Canadian engineering offices and the engineering team that we set up here uh, all the way back to 2002 has just sort of evolved that that design to be very Middle East specific. Uh, it, it that particular design is regularly um, 
a number of NOC's best performing rig month over month. Wow. We're, we're proud of it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> no doubt. Well, uh, we do have another question from uh, Andrew, again on LinkedIn. And he's wondering if you could talk a little bit, uh, maybe this might be for you, Asad, a little bit on the drill ship business or how that looks in the future, or if, if you'd uh, be willing to touch on that. You want to go ahead with that, Ed? I, yeah. I mean, the uh, the offshore part of our business is, is challenged right now. Um, offshore lift economics tend, tend to be um, some of the highest in the game. Uh, but they also tend to have, uh, you know, when, when we when we find elephants, we we tend to find them offshore, outside of of the Middle East. So I, I think the offshore market is is probably going to remain challenged for the the medium term. Um, we have seen some some upticks, which is great. We've seen some contract awards uh, recently. Um, specific to this region, um, we actually have a, a couple of drill ships that have, that have been here, either working in the East Med or we had the first drill ship drilling offshore Oman um, during COVID actually. Uh, so we are seeing some demand, but that demand really is, is gonna be muted for, for probably the, certainly the near term and probably the midterm as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll maybe add uh, to Ed's note, um, when, when, when we mentioned earlier, Shale has taken uh, probably a, a pretty challenging time, and, and thing are, things are rebalancing uh, a bit uh, outside of the North American market, uh, more inter international markets, particularly um, the Middle East is, is a big one of them. Uh, but also, um, as investor behavior changes, uh, I think more and more of that investment capital is going to travel towards more sustainable, more reliable sources of uh, return. Um, and historically, those are the deep water offshore applications, which um, although have been longer in, in, in cycle time, uh, mm -hmm. have been more reliable uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, investment for the investor community. So uh, it, it is more, a, more, more, uh, a, a much bigger investment to make. Um, uh, some of the work we've done in the past on the per barrel basis, although nothing competes with the Middle Eastern cost per mm -hmm. barrel, but when you compare shale to deep water offshore on a barrel to barrel basis, deep water uh, still cheaper, um, taking out the discounted uh, 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 cash flow uh, aspect of it. So uh, long, long answer to say that uh, our outlook for, for deep water offshore is... Uh, it might not be near, but it's uh, it has to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's that's good. I mean, those are some really good uh, good good questions. I, I think. I mean, really good insight into not only uh, the capabilities and and what uh, what's what's going on now, but but to some of the comments that that you just made. Also, Assad, li really looking at at the horizon and and understanding as. As uh, w whether you're you're uh, uh, you know a, a veteran or or new to the industry, that doesn't matter, really matter where you go. Everything has has cycles, and and so we just look to um, uh, think our, our CMO and and CTO is is uh, has has a great quote where he says, yeah, so uh, you know you'll have a have a downturn, and after a downturn, uh, you know, shocking news, there's an upturn, and uh, so. <laughs> So I think uh, it's really how you use that time in between those those ups and downs and what you can do to really help differentiate, which I know is, has been the hallmark of, of NOV and and, uh, mm -hmm. and the teams around the globe, really making sure that we're able to provide that value for customers, regardless of where we are, where we are on those those waves. So um, so I really appreciate the the insight, Ed, and uh, and certainly the, the time you took to, to really give us some some understanding, or at least an initial understanding for some on uh, not only what NOV is, is doing uh, from a historical standpoint, but but certainly today and, and what, what we can be looking forward to. It sounds like some really, really good things uh, coming down the pike. So thanks thanks for sharing that insight with us. Michael Assad, thank you for, uh, for inviting me. I, I really enjoy it. I am one of those people that's blessed to really like his job and like his industry, and I, I really enjoy talking about it. So it, it really was my pleasure to be here today. Good. Great.
Thanks, Ed. Well, well, Saad, uh, you know, I know that, uh, you know, as we said at the top of the show, we're continuing to to have a, a focus uh, from a, a regional standpoint and having uh, conversations um, just just kind of maybe high level. You know, what what can we be looking forward to as, as we continue these these conversations? I wanted to make a comment on, uh, I think somebody posted uh, on LinkedIn um, that they have uh, hopes for when the uh, downturn ends or for mm -hmm. when things go back up. And I, I want to say that what's happening to the industry is very unfortunate. Uh, we're, we're, we're some, some very good companies, some very good people uh, are struggling these days. But um, the consolidation that we're seeing, the news that we saw this week, uh, between companies like Devon and WPX, which had been uh, massive uh, companies in shale, are now merging to 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 one. Uh, we've saw we've seen uh, other uh, mergers like Chevron and Noble um, uh, a few weeks ago as well. Um, even on the on the uh, frac supply, all of that's really part of the recovery. So. Uh, when when we when we look forward to, to things coming back to a bit of a normal, um, I think everything that's happening today, although somewhat painful, but uh, is is working its way out. The the fleet is is kind of cannibalizing itself to to to, to prime for a return. Uh, the assets are being uh, uh, high tiered so that production comes from the best assets out there. Uh, and the whole mentality, the whole structure of our uh, upstream organizations are also aligning with a cheaper barrel. So uh, I'm, I'm quite optimistic, Michael, uh, in where things are going. And I, and I really believe our industry has a, has, a, has a great future. Good. Well, looking forward to uh, continuing the conversations and, uh, and certainly uh, getting some additional insight from you. So thanks, Assad, for for joining us as well today. And, uh, and absolutely thank uh, all of you for joining us uh, wherever you may be watching us from around the world. We certainly appreciate your comments and feedback. So uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, if you have any questions or comments on today's show or topics that you think you'd like for us to tackle in the future, feel free to send us an email and that'll be askasad at nov.com. And we will uh, definitely look forward to getting back with you and, and hearing your thoughts uh, on our conversation today and future conversations. So from all of us here at NOV, thanks for watching and for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.